Welcome everyone back to Beat the Game. My name's Steve and we are doing the third aspect for our friend Quicksilver uh, and Justice. And then understanding the strategies, understanding how just uh, Quicksilver can perform extremely well in the Justice aspect. So guys, again, if you like these videos, please share, like, and subscribe. Uh, and then let's continue on to our grand adventure. All right, so... Quicksilver and Justice can be a tremendous powerhouse here. Um, and there is a few strategies that we can use. Uh, you, you might notice that there is no glare. It's because, thank you Jay for noticing uh, all the glare. Uh, I'm trying to, I unsleeved all the, the cards that I wanted to talk about. So hopefully the glare won't show up uh, with the unsleeved cards. All right, so let's look at, first of all, the uh, the Quicksilver events. Okay, so what kind of events? Uh, and again, if you if you haven't seen my Justice breaking down the aspects video uh, and the strategies within the Justice aspect, uh, please go check out those videos so you can understand uh, the references what I'm talking about certain strategies. All right, one of the first strategies is Alter Ego Justice. Uh, now, Quicksilver is not somebody that wants to stay on the sidelines, so Alter Ego Justice is not a, a, a strategy that is gonna go work well for him. It, it, it is very doable, but it's not something that you're gonna wanna invest a lot of time in, um, just because he is he performs way better in hero form. Uh, let's just say it like that. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to what it is. He is way better in, in hero form than he is in alter ego. Now, uh, one of the other cards that is pretty cool and the other uh, strategies is, you know, the flip-flop uh, strategy. And I think flip-flopping here, uh, Quicksilver, will be pretty good. Uh, but I think where he really is going to shine is, is, in, is in, like, aggressive justice. <laughs> so I think aggressive justice is really, really he, where he's going to be uh, the main, uh, his main strengths. All right, so for aggressive justice here, uh, there is a couple of events that we want to look into. There's not, I'm really, there's only two events that I suggest running when you're doing aggressive justice here. Uh, and then the first one is going to be concussive blow. Uh, so guys, you all know concussive blow, super easy. It's a three cost event uh, that, uh, you know, it's a hero attack. And if you paid with it with a physical resource, it gives three damage to an enemy and confuses him. If you don't play with the physical, it just confuses an enemy for three, allowing you to harness that flip-flopping strategy as well. So again, with cards like Friction Resistance that come in, uh, maybe I'll unsleeve this one because I talk about this one all the time. Uh, yeah, so with, <laughs> with that one, uh, with Friction Resistance, you're always, always sure to get your your physical resource that you need. So I think for that, it's pretty, pretty good. All right, and then the other event for that you really wanna run is gonna be Stealth Strike. Now, I don't recommend running like, I, I do recommend running two of these at least, if not three of them, uh, Concussive Blows. Because you'll notice that what my strategy brings forward is everything else is permanent base. So having three of these is not a bad idea. Now. Uh, what's the other one is Stealth Strike. Uh, this is basically if you want to double team uh, on you know attack and, and and threat removal. This is just a, a stronger four cost attack. Again, if you want to run this, I say run one maybe because the card looks super cool. But aside from that, uh, it's one of those cards that I normally wouldn't even play if I was building the deck. Now. If I'm playing in multiplayer, maybe I want to run this, but because he has his card that says double team uh, or double time, which kind of does the same thing. It does, you know, hero action, deal two damage to an enemy or remove two threat uh, for a cost of two. Uh, for me, Stealth Strike, again, I'd rather do his events, his signature moves more often than the Stealth Strike. But again, if you want to go in for damage while still removing threat, this is not a bad card to add to your pool. Now, some of the cards that uh, <laughs> some of the cards that are, did not make the cut, uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, first one is great responsibility. I didn't unsleeve the cards that I'm not talking about, 
So great responsibility. Again, he doesn't have a lot of health. Uh, so that is not a card that you're going to want to be running. Uh, foiled is, is debatable. If you're going to be running, I think it's more uh, situational. Uh, maybe one of in the deck uh, just for the times that you do decide to go an alter ego. But you, you have so many other ways to mitigate threat that foil just becomes a dead card in your deck. And it's an event card that you're not going to need to play. Uh, clear the area. Now, I, I know this sounds uh, really like a good card. Again, it's remove two threat, draw a card, especially with, you know, that you can use friction resistance with that. So, you know, you remove some threat and then you clear the area to finish off all the, the threat. It's friction resistance. This is a card. If, uh, you know what, if I want to stay in hero form, uh, instead of running a card like Stealth Strike, I'll probably run and clear the area. It's, it's basically, as, it's, a one, it's a pure one cost card uh, that can draw you another card. So it's basically a cantrip. Uh, so once, if there is no threat, and again, when you're playing in solo, it's very easy to have little to no threat on the main scheme when you're solo justice. So this card actually becomes like, oh, okay, it, it helps you cycle your, uh, your events and cycle through your thing. So I think if I was gonna play like a pure, pure uh, solo, I think this is probably a card that I would definitely consider. Maybe one or two in the deck. I don't think I'd run a full three. I, I, I rather the concussion blows that just confuse the villain and just give me so much of a like a security blanket. So clear the area again. It's a definite maybe for me uh, in the cards that I would that I would choose. Uh, lay down the law. If you are playing in multiplayer, I definitely recommend this. As you if you're gonna do the flip flop strategy where you go, you stay in hero form a couple turns and then flip back, f come back into hero form, flip, flip, flip. The flip-flop strategy is, lay down the law is very good. Uh, unfortunately, the thing is you have a physical resource to pay for it, so finding the mental, it might it might be a little bit more difficult because most of the, the cards, uh, unless you're running like cards like lay down the law, um, uh, sorry, not lay down, like clear the area, uh, the, the mental resource is going to be a little bit harder to find. So for me, lay down the law, even if you're using the flip-flop strategy, I think it's okay, it's an okay card, uh, but uh, I maybe one in the deck. Again, you don't want to run too many events because Quicksilver will do all the thwarting you need just with his person. So event cards are not going to really matter for a Justice build. All right, same thing for Four Justice. If you're going to run one, run one just for the principle but again I think this is a wasted space in your deck if you're gonna be running cards like for justice again you need the mental resource and three threat is something he is going to be able to have once you have all his upgrades up so and then the last one is running interference again for two to remove two threat on stage two or two to remove three threat or on stage one if you're playing on on standard or three or five threat but it's only off the main. So uh, I, as much as I like this card, it's a good card, uh, but I think uh, if, if it's not an, an event-based character uh, that wants to you know, utilize events to the maximum, and I'm comparing her to Ms. I'm comparing every hero to Ms. Marvel because to run events, she is the queen, and she so far is not even close to being replaced by any character that is gonna do that better than her. So events are kind of spoiled in justice for me. Uh, and aggression, same thing. <laughs> uh, it's, and even in, no, in protection, they're, they're fine with a lot of characters, but justice and aggression events for me have been, I've been uh, toned down so much because of Ms. Marvel. She's just so good with those events. Uh, so yeah, so event wise, so those are my like, most of the, the the only like seriously the only event I, I suggest playing for people I'll get rid of this card is concussive blow I, I say run two and two in the deck if you're gonna flip flop a lot and I do recommend that you do flip flop a lot when you're playing justice to get more cards in your hand filter through cards faster with Pietro's natural ability I think like having running three of these is a definite must in a quicksilver deck and then again stealth strike for me. Yeah, like if you want to do some damage, but no, and everything else is just no. <laughs> so those are that, that's pretty quick for event wise. 
Uh, there's only one I really suggest running. And then the other one is if only, only if you're playing in solo, uh, the clear the area, just for like that can trip uh, that you can use. But again, it's more situational. So for me, it's not, it's definitely not an auto include. As far as support cards, there's two support cards you definitely want to run, again, to clear out your deck. Interrogation Room, even if it's not a huge minion heavy scenario, uh, at one point they are going to become minions. There's always like two or three in a villain deck. Uh, so Interrogation Room, for one, after you defeat a minion, either with an event or, uh, or just with your attack, basic attacks, you remove a threat from a scheme. So for me, at a one cost, definite auto include for the support cards. And then the next one is Beat Cop. You're running three of those. And when you're running three beat cops, you are just fine and dandy in solo. You you can just be an alter ego almost all the time. The villain doesn't scheme enough for for him to catch up with the amount of threat you can remove with three beat cops on the table. It's just insane. It's uncanny. This card is so good. For three, it's a constant toward of one and just increases and then multiply this with a factor of three. It just becomes insanely powerful. So definitely run three beat cops in your Quicksilver deck. So, and then there's one more support card uh, that uh, did not make the cut, and it really does. It is the sad little surveillance team. It's not a bad card. I don't hate the card. It's just that with everything else that came out, surveillance team just kind of goes to, uh, maybe, maybe. But yeah, just because it, ex you know, like I said, it's not a bad card if you want to, you know, you want to fill out your deck and you want to play pure justice. Like definitely, it, it, it synergizes well with Pietro because you can use the surveillance teams, put them down, keep them there. They're one little, they're a little bit cheaper than beat cops. And if you, like I said, if you want to run the surveillance teams and rather than the beat cops, it's okay because they're cheaper. Some people like to keep their, car their cost curve low. So, but then you just use these as necessary. If you don't need to use it, don't use it. Just keep it on the table until you actually see, all right, man, I have to get rid of these minions. I won't be able to thwart. All right, so I have my two, my, my two surveillance team that can keep that main, my, that main scheme down to zero or eliminate that side scheme. So yes, it does have a point, but I think beat cop is just more efficient in the long run because it never runs out. All right. So that is it for the cards. Again, there's only two support cards. I say run one and three. So that's four cards that are supporting your character. Uh, and let, let's look at the upgrades that we want to run. All right, upgrades that we want to run in our deck. First of all, skilled investigator. If I'm playing justice, I don't care. Uh, I'm running this card. It's a zero cost upgrade that can be discarded against caught off guard. It's, it's, a, it's a deck thinner. It's so easy. Even in multiplayer, you want to run three of these. And as soon as you see them, you don't care. You just put them on the table. You, you have them, put them on the table. doesn't matter what else you have in your hand. Just put, unless it's the best card in your deck, this is going out of your deck. That is why it's there. That is why that card is so powerful. It just goes on the table for everyone and just forget about it. And there you go. All right. Next card I definitely recommend playing is spycraft oh my gosh do i love spycraft again justice control is super efficient because uh spycraft again you can prevent a, a shadow of the past you can prevent the side scheme coming out you can prevent the worst card coming out at the expense of you know uh discarding this card and it's a one cost upgrade and there there will be times you will be like oh man i'm gonna lose to advance oh Oh, but I have my Spycraft. Cool. I get a minion instead. I can deal with a minion. I couldn't deal with it in advance. So that's that's why this card is so good. Again, you need to have a spy character, but if you're playing Agent Coulson or if you're playing Nick Fury or Mockingbird in your deck, then pfft, this is easy because those three are all spy characters. So Spycraft, definitely a card to auto-include. Under Surveillance, obviously auto-include right away. <laughs> Injustice is just so much control in solo play. In multiplayer, it's not a priority card, but in solo play, always, always, you have the van, put it out there and be safe. And be safe that you'll never lose to the main scheme unless you're extremely bad at thwarting, which is very, very rare when you are the justice player. So definitely a card to include. 
Counterintelligence, again, a safety net uh, in case, you know what, you, you kind of fall behind on your thwarting. There's too many minions and you're when, that's what's good about Pietro is you can, you know, focus on minions, let the threat go up for a little bit. Oh, you got the advance. All right, I'll just counterintelligence. Poof, there you go. I'm safe. And then next turn, I'll focus on thwarting. And then why you can focus on thwarting like that is because the heroic intuition and hyper perception. That gives you a thwart of three. So having a thwart of three is just OP. It's just super, super efficient in solo play in in multiplayer even the three threat it, it does go a long way but that in in solo play like seriously once you once you add the maximum velocity you have a thwart of five which is just insane like you're you're taking off like you can remove most of the main scheme even if you have um if you are playing in multiplayer the maximum velocity heroic intuition and hyper perception combo that makes your you are a five thwarter times two minimum. So that's ten threat removed uh, for that turn for shizzle. So I think that is a super super cool combo that you can do. All right, so I, I really like these little cards that combo well together. All right, and the last uh, the the upgrades that didn't make the cut. All right, so there's two upgrades that didn't make the cut again. Not because they're not good, just because uh, these are more situational. Uh, followed. Followed is a card that you're going to want to play if you're playing uh, like Norman Osborn, Red Skull, and stuff like that. That's for an aggressive justice player. Uh, these are going to be good. Again, they're one cost upgrades that you put on side schemes. Uh, so it's an easy four damage, especially with Pietro being able to remove two threat minimum per turn. Then once you have your, your upgrades, it's four or six threat minimum. So these follows are going to just pay for themselves and really help drive in that damage. But again, they're very situational. That's why I didn't put them into uh, my normal deck builds. All right. And then the other one is a fantastic card that comes from his kit. It is Sense of Justice. Now, if you look at Pietro's trip, uh, his Pietro's kit does not have one single thwart event in his deck. So there's nothing that is, uh, is an, a thwart event. So... There is absolutely no targets. The only time you're running this is if you have other characters that do have these thwart events uh, for 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 themselves. So, and you're just playing this on other people because this is a very good card. Again, Ms. Marvel, awesome. Uh, with this card is just super broken and OP. And yeah, so Sense of Justice is not a card I would include. Uh, again, with Quicksilver because the only card I want to be running is Concussive Blow or uh, Stealth Strike. Now, if you want to run it and because you're running the three, uh, the three clear the areas, then go ahead, uh, you know, because then you don't, your, your clear the area is actually a free card for real. Uh, so yeah, that kind of combos well together. But again, if, if that's not your play, I know, I know it's not going to be my play, but it's still a good combination. I don't get me wrong. But for solo play only, maybe two player. Uh, but more than that, uh, you forget those clear the areas because they just it's they're never gonna trigger. So for me, Sense of Justice is a good card, but for more event focused characters that want to be playing a lot of those events. So uh, there you go. That's why it did not make the cut. All right, and then let's look at the allies. There's not that many allies for me that make the cut uh, in in the deck. Uh, in the justice build i kind of tend to want to keep my allies on the table so i uh, i love quake quake is a fantastic ally that you want to keep on the table just because when you do have a bunch of minions and you do decide to go and alter ego she can just punch for two and then kill minions for two or deal two damage to minions that scheme even if they have that scheme of zero so for me she is definitely an auto include all the time for me Agent Coulson, obviously Agent Coulson, he fetches you a card. So at a cost of three and he goes and gets you that card. He goes and gets you those spy crafts. Again, Coulson is a thwart of two. Once he's on the table, you keep him on the table uh, for a couple turns and then you just, you know, sacrifice him as a blocker and then do that again so you can get, get more preparations towards the end of your deck. You know, you, if you play these smart, then you can, you can kind of time it so you, you make sure he shuffles back in. And then you're lucky enough, you get him back right the next turn. And you should always have threat under control. 
thanks to Agent Coulson. And the last ally that makes the cut for Quicksilver is Daredevil. Now, Daredevil for me, very, very good, efficient, uh, two thwart and one damage all the time. That for me is a beautiful combination. So Daredevil, pretty much in every Justice deck, Daredevil is there. Uh, he's from the core pack, so they, they got this guy right from the start, and he is a monster. Now, uh, a couple of allies that did not make the cut uh, in solo play, but obviously in multiplayer play, definitely you want to add those to your deck. Uh, but yeah, so Jessica Jones, obviously, the more players, the more side schemes are likely to come out. So she becomes really, really interesting, but only for multiplayer. That's why she didn't make the cut for me. Same as Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man, once if he's at two players or more, you're 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 looking. As soon as you have a two-player game, three-player game, Spider-Man definitely takes the cut. Uh, maybe even over Quake, uh, but at the cost of five, I'm like, you want to make sure that he's actually worth it. So that's why in solo play, Spider-Man is not the best ally to play. Yeah, he removes a side scheme, but. I think five to just remove one side scheme that I can do with a basic attack or a basic thwart event. Uh, I don't think it's the cost is there for Spider-Man and Solo. And that is it, boys and girls. So again, permanent justice is the way to go here. So if you guys will just take a little quick recap. The events I want to be running. I definitely want to be running Concussive Blow. Uh, the support cards I want to be running. One of these and three beat cops. The upgrades I want to be running. One skilled investigator. One spy craft. Uh, or two spy crafts, actually. I love having two spy crafts. Uh, under surveillance, one of. Counterintelligence, one of. Uh, heroic intuition, one of. This is all going to make you so efficient. And then the three allies that I would normally run in solo are Quake, Agent Coulson, and Daredevil. So if we look at that, two powers of justice, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen cards, uh, and that is just permanent justice. If you wanted, if you want to go the other route, you can always add the sense of justice, so that's twenty cards, uh, nineteen, and then the three clear the areas, that is twenty-two cards plus your three uh, strength and everything. Uh, then you have your 25 cards, that you have your 40 card deck uh, right there as a solo player. And you are golden, you are a golden goose. All right, so I will show you guys my deck build for Quicksilver uh, Justice and how I think this is a super efficient deck. Again, not a lot of events, which I, I keep specifying with Quicksilver, you just wanna keep running. So you just want to keep reading him up all the time. All right, so give me two seconds. I'm going to press pause and let's. Uh, I'll show you the deck. All right, so this is my deck build for Quicksilver Justice. Uh, two powers of justice and the three double resources. Justice is expensive. Uh, so we have a lot of high cost cards here in this deck. So we definitely want to be able to be able to play them uh, on, on a loop and have all the resources necessary for that. Uh, as far as events go, we're running the three concussive blasts, uh, concussive blows, sorry. Uh, three concussive blows, again, to stun, uh, to confuse the enemy as often as possible to be able to permit ourselves to flip down. Uh, we are running three assess the situation. Uh, that's for that plus one hand size. Again, I find myself running this card so much now because it's so good. It's super, super underrated. Uh, giving you that extra card in hero form just changes everything. All right, so again, you sacrifice a little bit. Uh, if you can't round out your turns a little bit, you, it, this goes in. We're running two first aids because we want to keep heroes like Daredevil uh, alive. You know, we so we want to make sure that he can keep staying on the board forever and ever. And then we're running the one interrogation room. We're running the three beat cops. So those three beat cops, again, are just gonna do justice for us in solo play. And even in multiplayer play, uh, they, they still do a lot of work uh, at two players. Three and four players, you know, they, they're they not as good, but uh, once you get there, <laughs> once you start four players, uh, then you wanna look at other cards that are a little bit maybe more efficient. Uh, but Skilled Investigator as an upgrade, 
the double spy craft for the upgrades, heroic intuition, counterintelligence, and under surveillance, you know, the standard upgrades that we want to be running. And then our allies, like I said, uh, Quake, Colson, and Daredevil, and as a big finale, Heimdall. I love Heimdall, even though he costs five, he is so good. Being able to control uh, the villain deck and knowing what's going to happen on his on his turn is just money. So there you go, guys. So this is my take on Quicksilver Justice. Uh, this is a 42 card deck. So for your purist out there, that 40 cards is the best you can have and don't want to go over. Uh, the easy fix is just removing one assess the situation and one first aid. And then you have a beautiful 40 card deck. All right. So that is it, guys, for Justice Keep. Uh, keep by because I'll be coming back with some leadership and then basics and then we're gonna run this by you in a little bit so guys keep on playing Marvel Champions and hope this helps you beat the game I kind of like that I really help I, I kind of I dig that all right